Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and the start of our second season with Barcelona where we have had some incredible transfer business over the summer. A lot of players coming in and an awful lot going out as well. Uh, so you'll see on the players going out, 53 million for uh, Matt Vienko, our first choice left back. He wasn't that great and when the bid came in it was far too much money for me to turn down. Memphis Depay for 50 million as well. We've got better options on the left wing. He wasn't playing as much towards the end of the season. He was also unhappy with the club for not giving him a new contract so I let him go for 50. Uh, Umtiti wanted a new challenge so I got 50 million for him as well which is a pretty good return on investment for a player that played uh, about a third of games last season. The same for Longley, about 30 million for him. He barely played last season as well, so just easy money to cash in on. Uh, Ilya Mariba also went for about 20 million. That was just free cash for a player that didn't really get in the team. Uh, so 190 million brought in. Uh, I don't think anybody else left uh, that would warrant suggestions from the end of last season. With Gouet, we knew about Cucurella, we knew about uh, Reese going to Monaco for 20 million, not a big surprise. Um, but in terms of players brought in, there are a few key players. So we'll start with Owen Windau, uh, who is a Dutch player signed at left back. He's better than Matt Vienko, 55 million. He'll do a really good job for us, natural full back as well, which helps. Uh, Sebastiano Esposito, I know some of you didn't want me to sign Ajax players, but I couldn't help myself. Esposito continued his sensational goal scoring form uh, for Ajax last season 23 and 25 in the league uh, a phenomenal return and an 8.11 rating and I could get him for 120 million instead of 240 which was a quote the previous summer I couldn't resist and I thought while you're at Barcelona why not why not maximize that ability to spend crazy money on the world's best players and bring them in and it also fits the balance of Barcelona's transfer policy to go absolutely top heavy and ignore the rest of the team. Uh, so in true Barcelona vein, I've also signed Kylian Mbappe, just 150 million, which I thought was an absolute steal for Mbappe. He's got a phenomenal goal scoring record as well, and it helps he can play any of our key three positions in attack. And look at those stats, they're absolutely phenomenal. He can also do a false nine role, so it was a no brainer really to bring him in. Uh, so we've added Mbappe and and Esposito to our attack alongside Severo, alongside Griezmann, uh, with Messi up there as well. Fatty on the left wing is going to be unbelievable. We've moved Mbappe out to the right in the winger role for this game uh, so that we can have Esposito and Severo in their favourite positions. But look at those beautiful full green circles. I mean, I can even swap these around and get perfect full uh, green circles as well. Windell coming in on the left back position. Laporte, Scrinian, Roberto in defence to Stegen in goal. We're just in a wonderful, wonderful place for this season. I might actually just bring Dest in for this game uh, to get even more bright green circles on the screen. But I am very excited about this squad and I have decided with the players that we've brought in that this is going to be my last season at Barcelona as well. We're just going to limit it to the two years. It's like playing on easy mode, uh, especially when you can sign players like Mbappe and Esposito. There's no value in keeping this going. But what it does do is it means there's now Ajax and Barcelona that have world-class squads. So the next club I go to is going to be really difficult to win the Champions League with Ajax and Barcelona both available in the knockout stages as potential opponents. So every club we go to, it's almost going to be harder and harder and harder to win the big competitions. Uh, the only weak spot for this Barcelona team is arguably the defence. But even there, it's a pretty strong side. So... Uh, this is going to be a dangerous team this season. I'm hoping we can win the lot. I'm hoping, hoping we can get another good, long, unbeaten run in all competitions. But that has to start today against Inter Milan in the European Super Cup. Uh, they've got Lukaku and Boadu, who's extremely dangerous, a world-class striker. We know him well. Uh, same with Cooper Myers, both players that we know from the Eredivisie season. Barella, a player that I thought about bringing in before we brought in Baro. Uh, Brozovic as well, obviously very good. Mylenko is a player I thought about signing, uh, but Windell was cheaper, so I got him. Uh, very strong defence, Aspilicueta on the right, our former Barcelona player. And Costa in goal. It's a tough Inter Milan team. There's a reason that they won um, the Europa League, but we are the Champions League winners and we should be winning this match as well. We really should be winning 
absolutely every match all season. This tactic, these players, Severo with a free kick, not far away there. Uh, but this tactic, these players, and me as manager, we surely have to win the lot. A while with the ball in, cleared away. I certainly want to get the Copa del Rey this season after we absolutely choked last season against Valencia. Uh, but here's Michael Enko. Good tackle by Mbappe, showing he can do the defensive work as well as the offensive work. Um, but I want Mbappe to get a lot of goals this season. He'll play all over the front three. He's not going to be out the right wing all the time. This was just so I could get Esposito and Severo in up top. But here's Windell, who's going to be a big addition to the defence. He really fixes that hole that we had on the left-hand side. Uh, Dest on the right side, and we've got a series of very good centre-backs in the team as well. That ball goes forward. It's come for a while. Now Severo out wide to Mbappe. A lot of players in the middle. It's Dest following up. Back to Awa. And a good save by Diego uh, or Diogo Costa in goal for Inter. Awa with the corner. Whips it in. Laporte's in there. It's cleared away. Severo chases it. Now Barro can have a shot. Instead he pulls it to Skriniar in the wrong place. And the chance does go begging. A better player there would have had a shot. But Skriniar is a centre-back, not necessarily the best man to have on the edge of the area in a European Cup final. But we are in control of the game at this point. There's not an awful lot uh, to be worried about. Fatty apparently not having the best game. He's got a 6.4 to be fair. It is going down, but you could argue the same of Mbappe as well. Uh, they've both made a number of mistakes, which is not ideal. So uh, tell the team we're not happy and we need to go out there in the second half and turn things around, otherwise we'll be bringing the likes of Messi and Griezmann on uh, to show the kids how it's done. Uh, but one of the big things when I came in was that the squad was very old, as Esposito does his job well. It's 1-0, the £120 million man has scored on his debut. I paid cash up front for him as well, and the same with Mbappe, both cash up front signings, quarter of a billion pounds between the two of them. Dest with the assist, Esposito with the finish, and we have a 1-0 lead. But one of the problems when I took over Barcelona was they had such an old squad that has pretty much been fixed at this point. We've got Messi and Griezmann, uh, who could both leave the club at the end of the season. I think Messi's actually retiring at the end of this season, so it'll be his last season at the club. Um, but we've definitely overhauled that now. A lot of players, 23 and under, pretty much exclusively signed at 23 and under as Lukaku, Boadu. Very lucky to get away with that one. We're going to go to a cautious approach just to tighten up a little bit here for the last 20 minutes or so uh, as Christensen finds Brozovic. Ball back to Kunde, Out wide to Lukaku. Desk going in with a tackle. Can't get there. Uh, Mbappe has won it though. Very good job from Mbappe there and he's attacking all on his own. He does this so well. He holds it up, puts it in. It is blocked away but he rescues the ball. Now Dest whips it across, Fatty's there, he brings it down, back to Windell, who gets a debut goal, assist for Fatty, stunning effort from Owen Windell to make it 2-0, and two debutants scoring when we only signed three players uh, is not a bad sign, and you put money in on Barpe, joining them on the score sheet on his debut as well, beautiful finish from Windell there, no backlift, uh, didn't really even position his body, he just had a hack at the ball and smashed it in as Severo takes a free kick here to the back stick. Skriniar's header is in, just creeping past the goalkeeper into that bottom corner for 3-0, and it's absolutely easy street at the moment. We can look to take off uh, Severo for Messi, also take off Barro for a little bit, uh, and bring on Goodmine. A rotation option in central midfield, Esposito giving away a foul there. Uh, Cooper Myers or Coop Miners with the free kick. No, Messi now with a free kick. Good position. He swings it in. It's cleared away. Comes out to Fatty. Back to Awa. He goes for it, but it's over the top. We're also just going to move Mbappe into Esposito's position for the last few minutes and bring on... Uh, actually, let's bring on Pedri out there on the right flank for a little bit. I'd like to give him a bit more game time this season. But we are on track for a very good win here against Inter Milan. Messi's corner goes in. Header over the top by Skriniar there. Not quite able to get it on target. Too high and over the bar. Free kick though for Messi. Can he get on the score sheet? He oh, has just hit the post. Very close from Lionel Messi there. Trying to add to the goal tally. Free kick for Sensi. Very good player. Cleared away. Lukaku's got it. 
ball in, and Mylokenko with the goal, but he's offside. Um, Mykolenko, Mykolenko, that's how you pronounce it. Always difficult when there's too many consonants and vowels mixed together. Here's Windell with a long throw into the box. Mbappe's there, it's blocked, but Fatty finishes it off. Mbappe's so close to cleaning up the three uh, debutant scoring, but unfortunately Fatty picks up his leftovers, but a sign of how dangerous he will be. Those long throws working a treat today, and Fatty with the follow-up finish to make it 4-0. We are absolutely on track right now for a very good season as the full-time whistle goes, and we lift yet another piece of silverware. Obviously, we threw away the chance to win this competition when we left Ajax after winning the Champions League, but we stayed with Barcelona, and we've won it this time for a few extra pieces of silverware. Um... And really, it's all about La Liga and the Champions League again, and also getting that first Copa del Rey. We get a bit of extra cash, um, but we just keep on winning at the moment. So what we'll do is just go ahead to this Villarreal game. Uh, we'll see how we kick off the league season. If we look at the schedule, uh, we're probably going to skip through an awful lot of these games, depending on who we get in the Champions League group stage. We could even skip that, because I think it's hard to argue we aren't going to qualify for the Champions League, but we could maybe pick up here against Real Madrid. Um, but I don't want this to be a long season. This is all about the end of the season. Are we winning the Champions League? Are we winning La Liga? Uh, so I will see you in just a minute for that first league game of the season, and then I won't see you for quite some time. Well, going into this game against Villarreal, it's not too different a team to the last match. In fact, I think it might be the exact same team. So we will just jump straight into it and see if Mbappe can get his first goal for Barcelona in La Liga uh, in his first La Liga game um, not too many shocks in the Alcacer team uh, in the Villarreal team with Alcacer up top uh, I think that's our former player Laturo Martinez uh, not Laturo Martinez Lissandro Martinez our former Ajax player from our first season with them who's in their central defense um, I'm not sure if I you know if I've sold him in the first season of my Ajax series I'm not sure he's going to keep out the likes of Esposito uh, Severo and Mbappe but we will find out shortly and it is Villarreal with the throw in Miranda into Malinowski. They don't seem to particularly fit this team. And Mbappe has stolen the ball. He's now charging through on goal and he's put it wide. You'd think with his high finishing that he'd be getting shots uh, on target rather than putting them wide of the post when clean through one on one with the goalkeeper. Uh, but that chance does go begging. We now have a corner which Awa will take in towards uh, the strikers. But Alcacer does get it away. It's then played forward. Uh, Roberto should deal with that and he does he plays it forward to Esposito uh, forward to Severo but the defender's got it and sent it back to the keeper launched forward comes down to Fatty on the left flank he's got two in the box to aim at he's doing it himself and that was probably the wrong decision I mean certainly having that shot on his right foot seemed like the wrong decision maybe if he'd hit it to the far post on his left he could have done a little bit better but the chance is still going here as Miranda hangs on to it at left back. Ball forward cut out by Skriniar. Now Mbappe over the top. Beautiful ball to pick out Fatty, who does round the keeper this time and get his first goal. That's the second time we've seen that combination already this season. Mbappe's assist last time from a shot, uh, which ran to Fatty, but this time it's a beautiful ball over the top and Fatty in behind with the finish for 1-0. And that is something you will see from Mbappe being out in a wide position, is he will create a lot more chances. Rather than just putting them all in, he can support the rest of the team. But I do expect him to play up front uh, quite a bit this season, uh, as and when he's needed. As the ball goes into Esposito, but he's put that one high and wide, so no La Liga goal for him as yet either. But I imagine it will only be a matter of time uh, until our £270 million worth of strikers do get on the score sheet in La Liga. And I'd be surprised if one of the two of them didn't win the Golden Boot. But here's Fatty, who will make a claim for that title as well. Windell puts it in. It comes out to Barrow, onto Mbappe. And then he's tried to put that one in, but Lissandro Martinez has got there and managed to clear it away. So about a third of the way through the game, or over a third of the way through the game, it's 1-0 to Stegen plucking that ball out of the sky. And we do look reasonably comfortable, but a one-goal lead is never that comfortable. And Elsa Ser nearly given a gift by Barro, but instead they've released Severo. He's got players in the box as he goes down. I'm pretty sure that's going to be outside of the area. The referee is going to go and have to check this one, but I'd be surprised if that was given as a penalty. Probably 
a free kick. The defender was in the box, to be fair, but it looked like the striker was outside it. Uh, so it depends how they judge where the foul uh, was committed. And the referee has decided it is a free kick, so I called that one right. It must be right on the line, though. Uh, and a wire is going to take it. It's a great area for a shot, that. But he decided to put the ball in, and it is hoofed out eventually uh, from Mbappe's poor ball. Mbappe not having the best game other than that assist. Uh, there's been a few kind of poor decisions being made around the pitch. So hoping to see a little bit more of him as this game progresses. We aren't far off half time. I don't know why this Villarreal team is so unfit. But Miranda puts the ball in the Porte away. Ball sent back to Malinowski, but Mbappe's won it. Now Esposito, there's a lot of mistakes from this team. Barro's been released. He's thrown on goal, one on one, and he does make it 2 0. Romario Barro's first goal of the season. Severo gets the assist that time, uh, and it was just Villarreal seeming too tired. Excellent counter attacking play. Look at the number of players who could have run onto that ball, but it was Barro who got there. He had the legs to outpace the defence and the cool head to finish it in that bottom far corner. And we have doubled the lead now, and that should be our first three points of our title defence in the bag. I wouldn't imagine we're in for too big a challenge this season uh, from Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid, not with the team that we have. I'm expecting us to see this season now in as much ease as we did last season. And there's a ball thrown in, and Esposito can't get there, or can't get it in. But Mbappe does score his first goal for the club. The first, I imagine, of many, many, many goals. Windau with the throw, Esposito with the header, Mbappe with the finish. Uh, I think that may well have been going in without Mbappe's touch, but he made sure of it. The three signings this summer combining to give us our third goal of the game, and we can look uh, very comfortable uh, from this point going out. We will just make a few changes now. Uh, we can certainly take off Severo and give Griezmann his first run out of the season. Fatty can come off for Pedri. Um, and we do have some serious strength and depth in this squad as the ball goes in to Camacho. Windau trying to win it. He is on a yellow card. Needs to be careful. And it's Morales, but straight into the arms of Testegan. But we have great strength and depth. A lot of young players who can start making appearances this season as well as Severo loses out on that header. Comes to Milanes again. Malinowski out wide to Ontiveros, Mbappe trying to tackle him. Ball out wide to Camacho. Takes it to the byline and is fouled. And that was a very long and unnecessary highlight, it has to be said. We can swap uh, to a slightly more cautious approach as Window puts the ball in Esposito off the bar with that header. Uh, but we're not far from the full-time whistle and this is a relatively comfortable game we will just take Mbappe off now and bring Usman Dembele on we've got a few players we're gonna to have to rotate in uh, to keep happy when you're this top heavy with this much talent uh, you will end up with some unhappy players if you don't do that so it's gonna to have to take place as a while puts the ball in Laporte arriving but that is over the top from him as well we could have had so many goals today 27 shots and 12 of those were on target but we've got an injury to Roberto I'm not gonna bother changing the team at this stage we'll just hope they don't attack down the left flank and that seems to be working right now they're not getting many chances uh, Atletico Madrid getting a win but we've won by three and that means we will be going to pretty much the top of the table from the opening day a very nice performance and as you can see top of the table um, Real Madrid still to play there taking on Valencia but looking ahead we'll probably get through an awful lot of these games unless we pull a big team in the Champions League that I'm worried about uh, we may well pick up here with Real Madrid and then the last Champions League group game so that is looking ahead to December so that could be three full months from now because we do want to get through this uh, season reasonably quickly because it's going to be largely predictable I would imagine but do drop a like down below if you enjoyed those big money signings in this episode make sure to subscribe to see how we get on as well this season but until next time see ya